Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr. This is episode 291 of Cryptobiography, and it is called Last Will. This is the entire story. There's no you know, part one, part two. Here we go. Daniel stumbled on through the night. The half moon behind him was in a clear sky, and he could make out a sort of path in front of him. The light he was following seemed to be at the top of a gentle hill. He stumbled and continued on, nursing the heel of his hand that got scraped. He got to the top of the hill, and the light seemed to be nearby. It was just by a tree which he ran toward. But when he got there, the light was gone. Hello? Is anyone there? I'm lost, Daniel said. He pulled out his phone again and tried to turn it on again, hopelessly. The battery had gone dead only an hour after sundown, and it must be near midnight. He put it back and looked around, then put his back to the tree and sat down. Well, this is a problem, Daniel thought. He was just far enough away from any town that he couldn't see a nice glow to make for, and it wouldn't be safe even if he did. He was very tired, but he didn't know how safe it would, would be to go to sleep. There weren't any bears in the area any longer, but there were coyotes and lynxes. He tried to think back on how he'd gone off the path in the first place. He wasn't normally inclined to go wandering in the near dark, and especially not in an area he wasn't familiar with. He liked hikes and camping, and he knew the rules. How had he gone so badly wrong? He closed his eyes. Not that there was much to see beyond a few stars or the branches. There had been a light. He had almost been ready to go to sleep. The tent was set up, everything had been cleared up and put away. He was answering the call of nature when he saw a light through the trees. He'd walked toward it, and it never seemed to get any closer. At some point, he had decided it was some sort of astronomical event, which meant it would never get any closer. He turned around, but couldn't seem to make his way back. He tried his phone, but there wasn't a signal, and the map he had preloaded wasn't detailed enough to show the sort of animal tracks he was following. Plus, he had used the flashlight a lot. Soon it had gone dead. He'd walked around in the dark, hoping to find some sort of main path, or scent of his recently doused dinner fire, or something, but it had no luck. Then he'd followed another light, probably another astronomical body, up to the top of this hill. What a dummy, he thought. He wasn't even sure which way was north. But the sky was clear. He could determine it by the movement of the stars if he had to, or by finding Polaris, or at least by the sun in the morning. Then he would make his way back. Map or no map, he would be able to work it all out. The threat of an animal, particularly as it was fairly remote, did not keep him from feeling sleep come upon him sitting propped against some kind of deciduous tree. His eyes got heavier and heavier. At some point, he heard a whispering voice nearby. Wake up. Daniel did so, jerking awake. Someone's here, he thought. They'll know the way out. Hello? Lost. Yes. Good. Now Daniel is fully awake and scared. But the voice had seemed so calm. He did not try to run. It had also, strangely, not seemed to have any directionality. He couldn't tell where it was coming from, other than it sounded nearby. Who's there? I am no one, and always have been. What do you want? You just gave it to me. The voice was soft and sent a chill down Daniel's back. What did I give you? One last laugh before the grave. This did not help Daniel in any way. Who are you? I am the only one. What does that mean? It means ages ago, I was myself. Myself alone. I was beautiful, or so I thought. I was a light in the darkness. I was the only light in the darkness that didn't come from the sky. But no one liked me. They thought I was a fraud, a false moon, a pretend star. They avoided me. 
Then there were lights that weren't me and weren't from the sky. It was the people. They had fire. My light was wan, pale, yellow. They paid me no attention. The fire lights kept growing year by year by year. I found myself splitting up, broken into pieces by the new lights all around. I was weaker. I could not talk. But I knew they didn't like me and really didn't care about me. So I decided to make them fear me. I started drawing people off the paths. Fire they had, but it was hard to keep fires going on long walks at night. And when they went out in the dark, they would see me. They would notice me. I drew them off their desired path and into the wilds where they got lost. They died. They grew afraid of me. They gave me a name, the Willow the Wisp. You were that? Daniel asked, not sure if he could believe it. I don't care if you believe me or not. I am taking advantage of my regained voice to tell someone something before I go. Once you were the Willow the Wisp, what happened? For centuries, I continued to lure travelers, and they continued to die. But the lights, the lights kept encroaching bit by bit. Or at least, it was bit by bit for a long time. Then, the artificial light. In a few decades, everywhere was lit. People did not get lost nearly so much at night. And even if they did, they soon had lights to show them the way. There were fewer and fewer places around the world where people were getting lost. So many lights meant that what had cracked me apart was now, with nowhere to go, pushing me back together. I was finding myself merging again into one. Now I can hardly find a place around the world where people get lost at night. Between lights, roads, cars, flashlights, and now phones and GPS, no one gets lost walking alone at night. Only extraordinary fools like yourself camp and then walk alone at night. Daniel had nothing to say to that. And now I am one again and have regained my rather weak voice. But I am leaving. I do not know where I will go. Perhaps I will find a way into the sky. Just be another pale yellow light above, ignored by everyone. Or maybe I'll hide at the bottom of the sea, where at least my light will outshine the bioluminescent grotesqueries that live there. Or perhaps I will finally find my peace in death. I don't know what to say, Daniel said. Say nothing, the will-o'-the-wisp hissed. I've hated humanity for longer than your histories have recorded events. Perhaps since I was never any good at killing you, but you have mastered that art, you'll kill yourselves off completely, and I can be alone or find new people who will appreciate me. And with that, Daniel was alone again in the dark. And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, or Mastodon. And thanks for listening. Words and Music, copyright 2023, Cryptobiography, LLC, all rights reserved. Characters and events are fictional, fictionalized, or satirical.